other core subjects, nutrition education applies as well. And this is my personal favorite, science. I always personally found it so interesting how the food we eat affects our body. Nutrition is a science degree. I have a bachelor's in science and nutrition and food science. By definition, nutrition is a study of food and how it affects the health and growth of the body. It involves chemical reactions from growing food to cooking it to what happens to it once digested into our system. You can use it in a food lab or using cooking to show concepts of chemistry. Uh, this picture is of me just recently uh, doing a class at the Boys Republic in Monrovia. They had asked me how I made the Alfredo sauce the way that it was and the consistency. So I had told them that if you just add a little bit at a time while mixing it occasionally, the sauce will naturally thicken up over time. You can also introduce the concept of emulsions. Emulsions are not only found in chemistry, in a traditional chemistry class, I mean. Emulsions is the mixture of two or more liquids that normally do not mix. So vinegar and oil can be emulsified into a salad dressing as a side salad to go with Alfredo pasta or other dishes. You can introduce, when you're talking about photosynthesis, why not dig a little deeper and then talk about the biology or the parts of the plant with indoor gardening? And I'll dive more into this topic if you're interested on March 20th as well on the subject of garden-based nutrition education. Anatomy and physiology, uh, it's normally taught in the upper grade levels, uh, but you can talk about the fundamentals of digestion and its ties to imbalances of certain foods relating to disease risks. But why not introduce it a little bit earlier as well? For example, uh, as I shared with the Boys, Boys Republic class, uh, I did let them know that having too much salt can lead to high blood pressure, which means it's harder to pump throughout blood throughout your body and function properly. So just sharing this makes them more aware of their salt intake as it relates to their own body. Nutrition education can also be integrated into social studies. So specific topics within social studies usually include geography, anthropology, economics, history, sociology, political science, and civics. There's always this strong connection between food and history, origin, and culture. So let's showcase that. Ideas on this could be geography lessons on where food is grown throughout the world and which produce thrives in a particular geographic area. When you're doing capitals and states, you can talk about what our state fruit is. Uh, do you all know what the state fruit is, by the way? We actually showed it in the beginning of class or of this session. So it's avocados. So that's something that you can share as well. So plenty of opportunities for a harvest of the month lesson or things like that. You can do a history lesson on the advancement of farming and food preservation and production. You can also apply political science by giving the students the freedom to vote for their favorite recipe to be put on the menu. These standards are straight from the history social science content standards for California public schools. So when we learn where our food comes from and the process it goes through to get on our plate, we gain not only more perspective, but gratitude for our food and what we put in our body. It's important for students to learn where their food comes from. Juan Cisneros is a local produce farmer that Lenox School District uses to support their thousands of school meals each day. So contact your local, your nutrition services department to connect with local farmers. And this can also be tied to a harvest of the month le lesson, showcasing produce that they don't get on a daily basis on the menus. My name is Juan Cisneros, the owner of Verde Produce in Santa Maria, California. Verde Produce is a family operation company. I came to United States in 1982 at 16 years old from Mexico with a dream to have a better life. I worked six years in Los Angeles and moved to Santa Maria, California in 1988, where I worked to pick strawberries with a vision to improve and one day have my own company. Thanks to this amazing country and a lot of hard work, my dream comes true. I started with eight acres of strawberries in 1989 in Santa Maria, California. Now Berry Produce has over 2,000 acres of strawberries, chili peppers, avocados, squash, and bushberries. We have strawberries year around in Santa Maria, California, Central Mexico, Baja California, Mexico, distributing produce to the eastern and western of the United States, Hawaii, Canada, and locally. 
We are always experiment with new varieties and commodities to have the best for our customers. I would like to thanks to my team, to my kids who are my motivation to continue working hard. Thanks to all the stores, to all the consumers for the support. God bless America. My name is Juan Cisneros. While we honor our local farmers like Juan, we can't forget to attribute this to Cesar Chavez. Uh, Cesar Chavez Day allows us to recommit ourselves to honoring farm workers and their many contributions to our nation. Chavez co-founded the National Farm Workers Association, which later became the United Farm Workers, which nearly 2.5 million farm workers like Juan benefit from today. For almost 20 years of union organizing in California, Cesar Chavez has won his biggest victory. Legislation that will allow California farm workers to choose by secret ballot the union of their choice, the Teamsters or the United Farm Workers. After a special mass at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, Chavez and friends began their walk from the San Ysidro border checkpoint to Salinas, California, and finally to where it all began, Delano. It's a very long march, and uh, it's going to be difficult, but we're determined that, that it's best that if we're going to get the message to every single worker that we have to walk. We can't fly and we can't drive because uh, driving and flying is just uh, too rapid, and we have to... Uh, try and uh, visit them where they work, uh, eat with them, uh, try to be with them, and, and uh, in any way that we can bring about the, the uh, dissemination of the news of the uh, new law and to, and to, as I said before, try and get them to, to begin to organize themselves. Has the boycott hurt the grower? Yes, sure, it it's puts them in a bind because they can't sell the grapes at, the, at, a, at a profit, and uh, the, we've cut down the the uh, the amount of grapes being sold has been cut down considerably, and last year is an example. In Delano, the grape growers found themselves with about three million boxes of surplus grapes they couldn't they couldn't do anything with. Chavez claims the chains of oppression for the farm worker will soon be broken in California, with the TV8 Electro News Unit in San Diego, Roberto Salinas. So that was a footage back in 1975. Um, according to the United Farm Workers website, this was actually part of a 1,000 mile, 59 day trek to educate farm workers about their newly won rights. With Cesar Chavez Day coming up, this can serve as a great opportunity to tie in a history lesson and just overall awareness and paying homage to this holiday and provide that connection with farming and the food that we have today. So feel free to literally copy this slide and, and share it with your class. This will also be shared um, afterwards, after the session as well. I did mention political science as a tie-in as well. So it's important that we serve as a platform to give our students a voice and having their input on what they eat. Although, I don't know how likely we can offer sushi and medium rare sirloin steaks within the budget, as you can see on the second to last line one student had uh, pointed out. Uh, but it is great to know what they like and want. Uh, the main importance from this is allowing the students to have a voice and letting them know that we're listening to them. There are fields of food and nutrition that might be of interest to students. So why not showcase it in a career technical education program. They can explore exciting careers with food and nutrition and follow the path like a registered dietitian. Uh, there's other pathways uh, within being a registered dietitian, clinical, community, sports, food service, and school. Uh, there's also chef and culinary arts, farming and agriculture, diving more into food industry, processing, uh, manufacturing, restaurant management, food and drug administration, or exploring careers in the United States Department of Agriculture. Contrary to what we usually tell kids, I say let them play with their food. 
Younger students learn best with hands-on activities. You can repurpose with vegetable ends after you've snacked on the bell peppers and celery, of course, to do a paint activity. Uh, this was taken during a preschool lesson that I had done with an intern that I had uh, this idea to you know cut off the vegetable ends. And as you can see, the kids are having so much fun playing with the paint and they're painting, it, it ends up looking like flowers. And if you get the celery ends, it looks much like a rose. Older students can create posters for harvest of the month or other health promotion on eating more fruits and vegetables. And showcasing their art actually empowers your students to take pride in their own work as well. Nutrition education and physical activity go hand in hand. Some ideas to incorporate these together is creating a relay race game to spark some creative fun and have students grab cutout pictures of food and drop it on the appropriate MyPlate group section to create their own MyPlate. Uh, do keep in mind that you should have plenty of uh, space. I did try this once. Uh, make sure that all the desks are moved and out of the way, or you could do it outside. PE teachers, as you introduce new sports or activities, you can talk on the importance of food as fuel and offer suggestions on pre-activity snacks, like carbohydrates for fuel beforehand, and post-activity snacks, protein to repair and rebuild your muscles. For physical activity, you can use a quick brain booster to break up class. Shout out to Matthew Bassett, our senior program specialist in physical education and physical activity and providing this fun activity that can be helpful as a brain booster in a this or that activity in the classroom. So students would choose which fruit they would like, kiwi or watermelon. And afterwards they would do the activity at their desk. Takes less than one minute to do and very easy to integrate. 